Hey, Bruce Naylor here, and this is another installment of Q&A with Frugal Tech, and uh, I'm really enjoying this. It's a lot of fun answering your questions, and uh, hopefully you guys seem to be enjoying them as well. We're getting a lot of views on these, so your support is much appreciated. So let's get to the first question. who comes from Andrea Carnamio, who writes, uh, You have my subscription now. Great stories, great vlogs, in my opinion. They are focusing on what makes money for them. Now, she's referring to a video did about Apple. Uh, iPhones and iOS, Mac OS X will probably turn into becoming iOS 10 in the near future because that's the future. They are shifting more and more towards soldered and slimmer MacBooks, making them more portable with less components but difficult to fix or upgrade. The latest MacBook 12 is halfway between the Mac and the iPad. They need to sell but will professional users like the direction? Well, I think uh, if they don't, they're going to vote with their wallets, right? And when we talk about professional users, uh, and, you know, there was a time where Apple commanded pretty much the, the, the entire market for creative professionals, from illustrators to filmmakers to musicians, etc. But that has changed significantly over the last decade. And pretty much anything you could do on a Mac, you can now do on PC or even starting to become Linux just as well. So creative professionals are not really uh, tied to the Mac like they used to, and Apple knows this. But their fortunes are being made in the world of mobile. And that's where Apple is getting you know, most of their profits today. As a matter of fact, some of their investors probably wouldn't be all that upset if Apple got out of the computer business altogether. But no, Apple still has an affection for the creative professionals, and they did a couple years ago refresh the Mac Pro with a whole new build on that. They also just recently introduced the iPad Pro, which uh, might be of interest to some creative professionals. The merging of iOS and uh, OS X I don't ever think will come fully to fruition. It might, but what we do see is a lot more features from iOS being integrated into OS X. As long as OS X can run the applications that professionals want to use, and Apple continues to build uh, great hardware and uh, great operating systems, I don't see any problem for them down the road. But again, only uh, if people don't like what they're doing, they're going to vote with their wallets and they're going to go a different direction. That's the best I can do to answer your question. The next question uh, is a uh, question about my uh, little review of the uh, Data Color uh, Spider 5 Express. Uh, it comes from Cesar Camacho who writes, it seems like all three models of the Spider 5 are the exact same price of hardware or the exact same piece of hardware and the only limitations are via the software. Do you know if this is correct? I believe you would be correct in that. The, col the colorometer is, looks to me to be identical across the board. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm putting up a graphic as I answer your question on here that actually breaks down what you're getting when you go to the more expensive versions of the uh, Spider 5. And it's all got to do with the software. Uh, the more you pay, the more features get unlocked with the software. So uh, you can see in this chart that I've got up here, that is the case. Okay, the next question comes from Eduardo Nevada, who writes, I'm an Android developer, and I need to stop working on my desktop, and I've been looking at this machine. Now, he's referring to the video I did about the Asus. Uh, it was the ZenBook Pro UX501. He says, I've been looking at this machine. I've always hated Apple as a company and refused to let them rip me off. Uh, but seeing as I couldn't find a decent laptop, I almost bit the bullet and got a MacBook Pro. But then I saw this thing. I'm almost ready to buy it. But with Skylake laptop, it's beginning to appear. I don't think it'd be very smart. What do you think? First off, thank you for the question. Secondly, I'm not sh I never could get why somebody could actually hate a company. I mean, Apple is what Apple is. But irregardless of that fact, here's the thing. If you need a laptop now, and this will do what you want it to do, then there's no reason to wait for them to introduce a model, this machine with a Skylake processor in, in an undetermined time down the road, if at all. Uh, 
this, this laptop, if I were going to the Windows world, this would be the one I would buy. And that's because it is specced out better than the $2,500 MacBook Pro. Quad core i7, check. Uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, check. Um, flat onboard 512 gigs of flash-based PCIe storage, check. Uh, NVIDIA GT960 mobile graphics card. Uh -uh, the, the, uh, well, the new Mac Pro's got what the uh, new uh, ATI Radeon card in it. But at the time I got mine, uh, it had the M uh, GT750. So um, it's just got a lot going for it for $1499 versus, you know, $2,500. So um, spec-wise, to me, if you're going to stay in the Windows world, then I don't see where you're going to go wrong with this laptop. But if it's just something you want and you want Skylake, which will bring better uh, TDP with it, so you're going to get better battery life, better integrated graphics, although this machine has discrete graphics anyway. You know, you really wouldn't use that. Uh, but it does help with things like Quick Sync if you're uh, on some apps will take advantage of Intel Quick Sync on there. I go with, if it's something you want, and you want to wait, in Sky Lake, wait for Skylake. But if it's something you need and you can be productive with it and make some money with it, then go ahead and order this machine. You know the difference between want and need. And uh, there's always going to be something better, greater coming around the corner. And if we all did that way, no one would buy anything, right? So um, I would imagine that Asus got a pretty good buy on a large quantity of quad-core mobile uh, GPUs or CPUs, and uh, it's one of the reasons they were able to offer so much machine for the price. And certainly there's nothing wrong with the Haswell mobile CPU. So uh, hopefully that answers your question on that. Okay, the next question comes from, uh, looks like OD Devs B8. And this question is, and this is referring to the five things I didn't like about my MacBook Pro, and one of them is the combo audio jack. And I've had several people comment this is the thing, if you're going to comment on a video, uh, make sure that the uh, content creator can reply to that comment. A lot of times people will leave a comment, but I can't reply. You've got that option turned off. How can I answer your question? Especially if you leave me a question. How can I reply back to you? But irregardless, um, here's the problem with the combo jack. Every, uh, I have a very specific use. For most people, 99% of the time, it's not a problem. But for me, when you do podcasts, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to take the audio out, the person, you're, the Skype caller, their audio, run it through a mixer, right? And then you're going to record that to however you're going to do it. I do it on a Roland R05, or you could do it in uh, Audacity, whatever. You're going to be recording the voice. But you want to return all audio except the caller's voice back to them. And you want to do this simultaneously. And therefore, a combo jack simply doesn't work in that scenario. I'm, it just won't work. Uh, some people have tried, but the results were really, really poor. You're better off having a dedicated audio in and audio out jack. That's the problem. There's workarounds. You can get USB audio interfaces, and then it all works. But really, on a pro machine, why not have an audio in jack for crying out loud? But that's, that's uh, hopefully that answers your question. The next question comes from Tommy Thomas. Hey there, this is Tommy. I commented on your Dell 8700 review. I found it to be very informative. To be honest, I'm torn between the Dell Inspiron 3847 and the XPS 8700. I'd like to get the 8700 because it allows more RAM expansion, 32 gigabytes if I'm not mistaken, but I tend to prefer the case design of the Inspiron 3847. Which one would you choose? Well, uh, all things being equal, I still go with the uh, 8700. Now, here's the thing. This machine is in serious need of a refresh. It's been on the market a long time. Uh, this is one of those cases where want and need. I would personally, uh, if you can, hang out, hang on a little bit longer. and Because uh, I think Dell is right around the corner from releasing the XPS, the new version of the XPS product probably the 8900, but don't hold me to that. Uh, but I think they're going to be releasing a, an updated version of this machine in the, in the near future. But between the two, not only you're getting in a discrete graphics, which looking at the specs of the Inspiron it doesn't provide, but I think you're going to get a stronger power supply with it, more expandability, 
The XPS line is the high performance consumer line of Dell desktops. Uh, the Inspiron is kind of the middle range uh, um, desktop PC. But if you like the case, you like the case. But I don't know. I'd learn to live with it. If I didn't like it, I'd tuck it under desk, whatever. I mean, I don't really sit and look at the case of my machine anyway, but that's a personal preference. Go with what makes you happy. All things being equal, I would still stick with the 8700. The final question comes from that Asian dude. Hey, hey that Asian dude. Um, who writes, uh, and was talking about my uh, podcasting gear and all my audio equipment, and he saw that I had my ATR2100 microphone on a shock mount with pop filter. And he goes, great video. Can you tell me what shock mount you use for the ATR2100? Yes, I can. It's a, uh, it says uh, Cisno mic. Uh, it's from a company called Cisno, uh, C-I-S-N-O. It's the mic shock, shock mount with a uh, pop filler. And it's only like 15 bucks on Amazon. And it's a great investment. Nice little piece of kit. And I will put the link to that in the video description down below. So, um, that's it. That is this week's Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you, uh, you like this. I look for your comments down below and I'd like to hear from you. What do you think? Should our guy wait for a Skylake or go with Haswell and take advantage of the $14.99 um, ZenBook Pro UX501, which I happen to think is a rocking good deal for $1,499? Let me know in the comments down below. Bruce Naylor. Talk to you later.